Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to go over some cycling issues I'm having with my AR-10 and it's taken me forever to figure out what is going on with this gun and hopefully someone else out there looking for the same information or a solution to their problem I've got the answer for them here I hope because good lord I've been working on this thing for a couple of years now in my spare time on and off and it hasn't been a high priority if I, I got to throw that in there as well because it I don't usually shoot the AR-10 this was a build I did a while back and it's just been a, a hobby so to speak but I've never been able to get it to run uh, perfectly basically what I have here is a custom uh, upper and lower billet match set I mean when you snap this thing together there's no movement whatsoever it's made by AES weapons I'll put a link to them in the description below if I can and uh, I've got a 16 inch barrel on here with an adjustable gas block, mid length gas system, and it's going to be shot suppressed. I could not sh get it to handle any of the am ammunition I shot through it, would either failure to extract, failure to feed, whatever you want to call it. It was just not working right. And so I've adjusted my gas down to where I think I'm getting too much gas. With a when you put a suppressor on a gun, it's going to inject more gas in there and what happens is when the bolt carrier starts to move backwards after the guns fired the gas inside the chamber from that explosion the brass casing has expanded really you know beyond its limits and that's what the chamber the chamber compresses it keeps it in there well if the bolt carrier group starts moving backwards before the chamber has normalized and the brass casing shrunk back down to normal size the extractor is not going to grab a hold of it properly or it's going to grab it and start dragging it out and with that friction on the walls and it's going to slow the bolt carrier group down or screw the bolt carrier in its movement right it's going to it's basically adding friction it's going to hinder that bolt carrier group cycling there you're going to get a feeding problem or an ejection problem so one of the common fixes for this is to replace uh, for your bolt carrier group moving too fast too quickly is to put a heavier buffer in there so I have I've moved up to a tungsten buffer tube and the problem still persists and then I did notice there's some peening back here so my bolt carrier group is actually hitting back here on the lower and on the buffer tube itself you can kind of see some some silver marks on the edges of the buffer tube and so I've t there's way more silver than in there than the damage that you uh, that was really happening basically I took my Dremel tool out and I kind of relieved some metal in there thinking that you know this is a this is a brand new upper and lower maybe there's some kind of a defect in there where there's not enough space for the bolt carrier group to come back so I relieved some metal still didn't fix the problem and you can actually see at the top side there's some dings right there at the top so Heavy buffer tube, heavy spring, adjustable gas block, still is not 100% with any ammo that I try, and I've tried a bunch of different varieties. I've probably spent more money in ammunition than I have putting this gun together. So I started looking around, and I get lost in the forums. People don't stay on task, and it's, it's very frustrating. And I kept running across something about an enhanced buffer tube, but I'm not really understanding what's the benefit other you know what's the benefit of this no one really goes into great detail on it so the best I can figure is I've got some kind of carrier tilt so when the the carriers coming back it's it's tilting like this and it's hitting around the edges right there so carrier tilt apparently this with this little support area is supposed to fix carrier tilt but like I said, I can't find anybody going, yes, that fixed my problem. So that's why I'm making this video to show you, yes, that fixed my problem. So if you're having issues like this and you stumble across this video, this is for you. Basically, when the, when the gun is closed, the bolt carrier sits right about there, almost next to the buffer, up against it, close to it. Well, if you notice, if I move the buffer out of the way, or the carrier group out of the way, it's, nothing's touching it, right? When you use this extended uh, carrier tube here, or buffer tube, those, this extended area right here is this, acts as a support area for the, the bolt carrier group. So it actually sits right there. So it's already got a guide to help it insert. So in this case down here, 
when the gun goes off, this is wobbling around a little bit, carrier tilt, and it bangs into the edges of the tube to get inside. This acts like a shoehorn and creates a much smoother, uniform cycle. So once I installed this on the rifle, 100%, all the, I still have all the same ammo because it doesn't run anything really. And once I installed this and started shooting it, it ran every single thing I had. For years I noticed this and I thought, oh, that, you know, it's kind of a gimmicky thing to keep your little detent in place, but apparently there's more to it. That I never experienced this problem until I built this rifle, so I never really explored these buffer tubes. But I saw, I can't remember who the manufacturer was, but they're, they're selling this for like $50. And I thought, well, I'll throw another $50 at this gun. I've already spent who knows how much in, in ammo. And then I found this one. This is Aero Precision. They, I found it at Primary Arms for about $33. I'm in Texas, so I have to pay shipping and tax and all that stuff. But their, their uh, advertisement of this is the extended here. The threads are actually maybe one thread longer than this, this one that I'm using. So that kind of gets it further in to the lower itself and closer to the buffer uh, bolt carrier group. Additionally, the they have holes drilled out here and there's a hole in the back for air. So as the bolt carrier group comes back, you know, you've got air trapped in there and this allows for air to escape and water to escape if you're in the, a water type environment. And then there's a notch down here in the back that's supposed to help you install the uh, the stocks easier. I haven't really noticed a difference on that, but this little guide up here for sure did fix my problem. So if you're having issues cycling, whether it's an AR-10 or AR-15, and you've tried your buffer and all that stuff, give one of these buffer tubes a try with the extension thing, uh, extended little uh, shoehorn on the end. I'm gonna call it a shoehorn. But anyways, that is <laughs> for 30 bucks. I wish I'd have found that a couple of years ago when I first started this project. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video.